What is spiritual warfare? Where and how does it take place? Spiritual warfare is real, ongoing, and all around us. I strongly believe it's time we teach God's people about spiritual warfare the correct way, and that is the biblical way. Before I give you answers to what is spiritual warfare, how and where does it take place, allow me to take you deeper. There are three realms that you need to understand in order to unlock the mystery of spiritual warfare. The first realm is called the realm of God. We call this realm the realm of eternity. And why eternity? Because the word eternity means past, present, future, all existing in the now. God is in tomorrow as much as he is in today. He is in yesterday as much as he is in today. Scripture says he created the end in the beginning. The beginning in the end. Meaning God finishes to start and he starts to finish. We then have the second realm and it's called the realm of angels. We call this realm the realm of everlasting, or rather everlasting realm. Why is it called everlasting realm? It's because angels have a beginning, but angels don't have an end. They have what we call endless life. There was a time where God created them, but because they don't die, the realm that they are in is called everlasting. And the third one that I want you to always remember and always pay attention to is the realm of men. And we call this one the realm of time. Why the realm of time? Because man is subject to time. Man cannot be in tomorrow. Man cannot go back to yesterday, but man is trapped in the present and that is because of time. What controls men in the realm of men, which is time, does not control God. God is not controlled by what controls men. But what I want you to pay attention to is that between the realm of men and the realm of God, we have a realm called the realm of angels, which is the everlasting realm. But here's a mystery, and please never Forget this because I'm about to answer you now. Between the realm of men and the realm of angels, there is another realm called celestial realm. In the prophetic, we call this realm the realm of all spirits. But the Bible calls this realm heavenly places. I'm sure you have seen that word in the Bible, where the Bible talks about heavenly places. I know you thought heavenly places is here, but heavenly places is not here, is not here. Heavenly places is between men and angels. And that realm is called uh, celestial realm. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 12, Paul says something that is powerful. He says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, wickedness, and rulers of darkness. And then he tells us where we are wrestling them. He says, in heavenly places. The Bible says something very powerful in the book of Ephesians 1, and you read verses 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Notice, if you may, Paul says the war we are actually in, it's taking place 
in heavenly places. He then comes and says, God has released all blessings pertaining to life. But where did God lock them? Or where did God put them? He says, in heavenly places. So we have blessings in heavenly places. And the war he's talking about, he's saying is taking place in heavenly places. But what is heavenly places? Celestial realm. What is celestial realm? The realm of all spirits. I would love to believe you are still following. And to answer the second question of where and how does spiritual warfare take place? The spiritual warfare takes place between the realm of men and the realm of angels. Meaning spiritual warfare does not take place between the realm of men and the realm of God. Let me say that again. Spiritual warfare takes place between the realm of men and the realm of angels. And it takes place in a realm called celestial realm or heavenly places or the realm of all spirits. Not between men and God. And that is because the devil or demons in any way, because demons are in ranks, right? We have unclean spirits. We have evil spirits. We have demons. Then we have the devil. These ones, they are all in one group, but in different ranks. None of them can fathom the realm of God called the realm of eternity. But then God, every time one prays, please hear me here. What then God does is he releases an angel, right? That has to come down to the realm of men. But because there is a realm between angels and men, and that realm is a realm of all spirits, there are principalities here. There are demons here. I will give an example, and I pray you hear me in the Holy Ghost. In the book of Daniel chapter 10, Daniel is praying. Daniel is also fasting. The Bible tells us that when Gabriel arrived, appeared to Daniel, he said these powerful words. From the first day, you set your thoughts to seek understanding. Thy prayers were heard. Notice if you may. He did not say from the first day you opened your mouth. He said, from the first day when you set your thoughts to seek understanding, that tells you and I that God does not answer prayer, but God answers your thoughts. No wonder why the book of Isaiah declares, before you call, I shall answer you. But why do we then pray out loud if God answers our thoughts? It's because of what Gabriel said to Daniel in verse 12 of Daniel chapter 10. He said, I am come because of thy words. Meaning my thoughts is what God answers. But my words is what releases an angel. Let me break it down again. And I pray this time you don't miss me. So whenever I pray, my prayers releases an angel, but my prayers don't change anything about God. God responds to my thoughts. So every time I pray, an angel will release that which is unborn to the realm of men, which is time. So when Daniel prayed, God answered his thoughts. His words released an angel. But because there is a spiritual border between the realm of angels and men, Gabriel had to pass there, had to pass through that border. And there was a prince called uh, the prince of the kingdom of Persia that withstood him for 21 days. Daniel is in prayer. But where is Daniel? In the realm of men. Where is the realm of men? In the realm of time, or rather it's called the realm of time. So he's praying there, yet God has already answered him. An angel has already been released. But what's delaying the answer is what is taking place and what is happening in the celestial realm. And that was spiritual warfare. So for 21 days, according to what Gabriel said to Daniel, he said, I then had to call on Michael. Notice if you may. He did not say, I then have to call unto God. But he said, I had then to call unto Michael. 
Because on top of this realm, there is a realm of angels. So when you called on Michael, Michael came down to fight the prince of the kingdom of Persia. And while this Michael was fighting the prince of the kingdom of Persia, then Gabriel was able to come down with the answer of Daniel. Daniel is the one being fought. What do you mean is the one being fought? Is because the prince of Persia does not have a problem with Gabriel, but he has a problem with what Gabriel is going to give Daniel. So every time spiritual warfare happens, the enemy stops the movement of the angels because he knows that once you get hold of the truth, once you get hold of what you are praying for, you'll be able to glorify God. So in the spiritual warfare, the enemy is not fighting angels because he hates angels but he's fighting angels to stop you so spiritual warfare is a war that is happening between angels and evil spirits you are involved because you are the one now who the enemy is trying to influence in a negative way you are the one who's being fought because the enemy does not want the blessings that God has given you to materialize into the natural. That's why whenever we prophesy, I hope you're understanding this. Whenever we prophesy, you'll hear prophets saying, in the realms of the spirit. Do you know why they are saying in the realms of the spirit? Because the Bible says you have been blessed with all kinds of blessings in the realms of the spirit, in heavenly places. So if I look at somebody and they have cancer, when I look in the heavenly places, which is the realm of the spirit, and I see them healed, I will say in the realm of the spirit, not in God's realm, but in the realm of the spirit. This is where everything that is pertaining to you has been placed by God. But this is also where spiritual warfare is happening. So spiritual warfare is happening so that that which God has put here for you does not come down to you. Hence the enemy has put a spiritual roadblock. But now it is not you leaving your body like most people think when Ever somebody talks about spiritual warfare, they think their spirit lives and begins to fight demons, bind demons. No. What fights is your angel. What fight is angels. I know what I said. Let me repeat myself. What fights is your angel. What fight is angels. Somebody will say, but apostle, what do you mean? Remember in the book of Acts chapter 12 that Herod arrested James. And the Bible does not tell us that the church prayed. And what happened? Herod killed James with a sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he went after Peter, the leader of the church. And the Bible tells us that when he arrested Peter, the church started praying. Because then the church understood that Herod was not joking. But as the church was praying, in verse 7 of Acts chapter 12, it says, And the Lord released an angel. So there are prayers that went up to God, caused God to release an angel. So every time I pray, my prayers causes God to release an angel. But my thoughts causes God to answer me. So if I think about it and I don't pray about it, I will never see it. Because an angel that is supposed to be released to minister to me has not been released because there are no words. So words are a vehicle for spirits. That's why it is important for you to watch what you say. Because words are more alive than you think. Words are spirits. So whenever I say something, I am actually channeling a spirit. Either divine or diabolic. So now, I want you to understand that when the church prayed in Acts 12, God released an angel and an angel came into the realm of men. And when Peter knocked at the door where the prayer was taking place, the Bible says, and they said to themselves, it is not him, but it must be his angel. Meaning these are people who understood spirituality in a different way. That they knew that Peter, yes, he might have been in prison and he might be still in prison according to them. But his angel is not locked by the walls that has locked him. 
So if Peter was in prison, how come they were able to say it must be his angel? Because they understood that his angel is not stopped by what stops him in the realm of men. So if there are walls, your angel is able to move beyond the walls. So that is the same angel that fights for you in the spirit. And many of us, you need to understand that we don't have only one angel, but you also have your personal angel that around you, you have other angels. Jesus says, do not despise these young ones, these little children, for their angels presents themselves before my heavenly father. They are angels. And that is now telling you and I that we have angels that go to God on our behalf. Hebrews 1.14 says, angels are ministering spirits sent to minister for them, not to them, for them who are heirs of salvation for them, not to them. If I say to you, I'm here to minister for you, what I'm looking for is, tell me what to do. But if I say I'm here to minister to you, it means I already came with what I came with to minister to you. So it does not matter what you say, I came as I am, and you have to accept me as I am. But if I say I'm here to minister for you, what I need is your word. Tell me. That's why the Bible declares in the book of Psalm, angels hearken to the word. That then brings us into understanding that spiritual warfare is happening between angels and demons. And it is happening between the realm of angels and men. And that is called the celestial realm. Now let me unlock the mystery. What causes your angel or rather what will cause your angel to prevail every time, or your angels, every time you pray, it is not how loud you are. It is not how aggressive you are. But it is what Paul talks about soon after he told us that we are in a spiritual warfare. And that is the armor of God. In the armor, we see seven important things. That if you do not uh, put them on. It does not matter how loud you are. You will never see manifestations. And that is because without the armor, you can't prevail. Now, the armor there, let's break it down quickly. There are seven things that he talks about. He talks about the truth, which is the belt of truth. But what is the truth? The Bible says in the book of John 17, 17, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy truth is thy word. Meaning you should be and you are to be filled and full of the word of God. The breastplate of righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is when one is in the right standing with God. And we know that we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. It brings us back to the word. And then he speaks about the gospel of peace. Jesus is the prince of peace and Jesus is the word. It brings us back to the word. It speaks about the shield of faith that will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. How does faith come? Faith comes by the word, by hearing of the word. It brings us back to the word. And then it speaks about the helmet of salvation. How does salvation come? It says, how can they believe unless there is a preacher? Salvation comes by the word. And then he moves forward and he says, then having the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And last but not least, he says, praying always in the spirit. So it is important for you to understand that the word of God in you will cause you to be an advancing, terrorizing force. What do you mean, Apostle? I mean, when you look at the armor, there is nothing to cover the back. The armor protects you from the front. Why not the back? Because God does not expect anybody full of the word to surrender or to retreat. Meaning once you are full of the word, you become an advancing, terrorizing force. I can't wait to teach you on part two of this message. I feel the anointing. This is too much for me. So I'll be coming back with part two on the very same message. We are far from finishing because this message will then have to unlock even the mystery of speaking in tongues. This same message will unlock the mystery of spiritual gifts. How to know your spiritual gift. It is too much.